religion online gets routed. But to understand why the internet is a place where religions come to die, you need to take a broad brush look at the way that religions function as social organizations. In order for a religious population to be stable, it must propagate effectively. That is, the number who join the faith must be greater or equal to the numbers who leave it. This rate equation defines the success of all religions. Unsuccessful religions are, by definition, those that fail to propagate effectively. Likewise, if you want to be a successful religion, you must actively get others to subscribe to your faith. And this typically includes social coercion and the abuse of the manipulative minds of children. I mean, the willingness of children to accept Santa Claus testifies to the universal susceptibility of the child's mind to suggestion, especially by its parents, and its inability to accurately distinguish between a, a comfortable fantasy and reality. And for those of you who doubt the effect you can have on a young child's mind, even inadvertently, at the age of about eight, I was told the story of Chesterfield Church, which is the devil came down and wrapped his tail around the steeple and thus bent it, rather than it being something to do with unseasoned timber. But I remember being terrified at the concept, not particularly of the devil, but of the existence of giant monsters capable of doing this. Yes, I know it's an absolutely absurd suggestion to the mind of an adult, but to a child, it was a terrifying concept. And if at that point someone had told me that praying would save me from such monsters, I would have done it simply through the fear induced by my lack of ability to accurately assess threats. In this sense, I would maintain that just give me any child of formative age and I could get them to believe anything simply by pushing the right psychological buttons and by telling the child the right stories. I am the embodiment of God. I am divinity and humanity combined. And I'll say more than that. I swear it by the one who lives forever and ever that it's so. Somehow, it was like all of heaven was open to me. Somehow, I started to see God. Well, somehow, as the Son of God holding me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I'm laying there, and it's like, for the first time, I was like, God loves me. Mm -hmm. He loves me. And Michael was saying things to me like, you're accepted, you know, you're healed. Simply by pushing the right psychological buttons, this was God holding me. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, the next day, <laughs> Father sent you. <laughs> yeah. My experience was, you know, similar to yours. Uh huh. I took off my clothes and I laid naked on his bed and he just held me. And it was like a whole new picture opened up to me of God. See, people outside say, well, you know, it's fine if you're an adult and you join a group like this because that's a choice you make. But yeah. when children are born into groups like this, they yeah. say, well, these children have not really made a choice about it. They've been born into <laughs> it. <laughs> and that this is the world that they know. This is the only world that they know. Excuse them. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing at you. Now, religion, for the large part, may not be as contrived or as intentful as this, but their achievement is the same, and that's to abuse the receptive mind of the child into becoming a member of the religion. Similarly, religions need to put a great emphasis on preventing people from leaving the religion. This is typically done through social coercion. Why do you think it is that so few people do what you have done and leave the church? The moment you acknowledge to yourself that Joseph Smith right. did not tell the truth about his experiences and his achievements, you just committed social suicide. And again, some practice the art more fervently than others. Islam, however, takes leaving the faith, that's apostasy, to a whole nother level. What is the penalty is for the apostasy? that is the thing that you fail to discuss, and that's why you've got those prejudicial views about faith. With what respect. is the penalty for apostasy? What do you teach the children will happen to them if they give up the Muslim faith? Well, let's bring Can the I... debate back into Britain. What is the penalty for apostasy? But what is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? 
Um, to be honest, I cannot back that point up. Dr. Dr. Lukadam, what is the penalty for apostasy? Well, and, um, before... Uh, we keep well, coming down this apostasy. Give us a quick if, answer if on what is the penalty for apostasy. Islamic then we'll country, you Sorry? very well know, if it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, ap apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you, that's well, all well, I want well, to hear. But such harsh treatment of those who leave the faith encourages the remaining to uh, <laughs> remain faithful. It instructs the remaining members that there is a horrible price to pay for even thinking about leaving the religion. I drove away and I fully expected, because Mormons are very good at going after their lost sheep. Okay, when someone's leaving the fold, they don't let you leave easy. They go after you, okay? Typically, such behavior is enhanced by the population strongly discouraging, subjecting the faith to scrutiny. However, such coercive techniques are much more effective with the application of crowd psychology, that is, the local superiority of numbers. I need you to get serious, serious with God. Say, God, God. I'm here to be trained. I'm here for an education. I'm, here for an education. I'm, willing, God. I'm willing, God. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll say what you want me to In, say. Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The chant. Everyone loves a droning repetitive chant. Attention everyone. The, the leader, leader is good. good. The, the leader, leader is great. We surrender our will as of the state. state. The, the leader, leader is good. good. The, the leader, leader is great. We surrender our will as of the state. state. That is, the efficiency of indoctrination is significantly reduced when all the members are not localized in one place. It is generally the case that the more bizarre the religion, the more extreme these factors are exploited. Those who most shamelessly exploit such techniques are typically called cults. What methods do you use? Um, extortion, um, force, threats, duress. But there's no real defining line. Essentially all religions pursue such methods to a greater or lesser extent. Now this sort of status quo has been propagating happily for thousands of years in thousands of cultures with thousands of religions. But our civilization has recently changed in two significant ways, both of which account for the reduction of religion in first world countries. Firstly, we acknowledge the susceptibility of the child's mind and view indoctrinating children as an abusive practice. Modern civilization sees activities such as threatening children, children who will happily accept the uh, reality of a man dressed in red giving things away from a floating sleigh pulled by flying reindeer, threatening them with eternal torture by fire if they don't subscribe to you, your particular brand of faith, is seen as a particularly abusive and an unnecessarily sadistic hard sell on a vulnerable and captive audience. Secondly, is the internet. On a local level, freethinkers may be a minority compared to a specific religion, but that minority has homogeneity worldwide. The bottom line is that freethinkers could be a minority everywhere, but still a major player on the world stage. Indeed, by percent, arguably only the Catholic Church is larger than those claiming no religion. And just to put that into hard context, the Thunderfoot channel alone currently has a YouTube footprint about four times larger than the largest religious denomination in the world. Further, religions are typically introverted societies where questioning the religion or religious authority is strongly discouraged. So, for a while I would go to church and I, was, I wasn't trying to make trouble, I was just raising my hand and saying, you know, I, I read this and blah, 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 blah. And uh, no one had any answers and uh, no one had any tolerance for that either. It became clear to me and I stopped going to church uh, at a certain point because I knew I was, they weren't, they weren't there, you know, they were there to have their faith renewed and all that stuff and I just wasn't helping. However, on the web, it is essentially impossible to avoid such scrutiny and this strips religion of one of its main protective mechanisms. Conversely, science in such a forum is a hands-down winner. Science was always built on ideas surviving open scrutiny, from evolution to electricity, from special relativity to superconductivity. 
As science is essentially dedicated to building a better understanding of the universe, it thrives on poor or incorrect understandings being expunged, and as such it welcomes such scrutiny, as it ensures that what remains or what has been added makes it stronger and more robust than what we had before. Scrutiny advances our understanding and makes science stronger, while religion simply wilts to naught under the self-same spotlight. So is this a reason to do nothing, as smart arguments propagate better than bad ones in an open forum? Absolutely not. The reason religions fail on the internet is because people like you subject them to scrutiny. If it's not subjected to that scrutiny, if it's not put under that spotlight, it will not disintegrate. This is how it works. It's the atrophy of an unsustainable idea by a, a thousand cuts on a wide front that makes the internet simply a place where religions come to die.